Unigen supports the MicroProfile tool, an advanced external embeddable CPU and GPU profiler, enabling detailed per-frame inspection. Using profiling dumps simplifies capturing performance spikes and finding their causes. Let's see its usage on the heavy oil refinery sample. The micro profile is available only for development builds of the engine. It won't be compiled for debug and release ones. So check if it is enabled by using the micro profile info console command. In case it is not compiled, you will need to close the editor, switch to the SDK browser and reconfigure your project. Click other actions and choose the configure project option. The engine parameter must be set to development. So, let's update the configuration and open the editor again by clicking Edit Content. The micro profile is now available. The command shows its general information, such as maximum limit of captured frames, which is currently set to 1000. Keep in mind that the micro profiler needs a warm up for the first 1000 frames to show valid information, which corresponds to 16 seconds at the frame rate of 60 frames per second. In the info, we can also see the local web server is enabled now. Let's open the visualization interface. Choose Tools, Micro Profile. This will open the Micro Profiler web interface in your web browser. It is always available at this URL during the engine runtime. You can preview the performance data in several modes. We're going to consider only the detailed mode, which is the most complete one. The interface may look a bit overcomplicated, but it consists only of two areas. The main workspace, containing detailed info on each rendered frame, can be dragged with the left mouse button and scaled by using the mouse wheel. You can do the same by holding the control key and moving the mouse up and down. Choose Options, Help to see the complete list of controls. The upper area is the History View, which is intended for convenient navigation across the whole dump. Each column represents a frame. You can navigate to it quickly by clicking it or dragging the working area for fast scrolling across the captured frames. We need the last frames as they give the most relevant profiling data. Height of each frame's column indicates its rendering time. You can notice many spikes generated by such a heavy scene. You can adjust the scale by changing reference time defining maximum column height via the corresponding menu. In the detailed mode, Performance data is displayed in several threads horizontally. On the very top, the GPU thread is shown. The large stack below represents the main engine thread executed on the CPU side. You can manage visible threads via the corresponding menu item. Each function or thread is displayed as a separate colored region. Each captured frame starts with the update function. Here it appears as a bright green block in the CPU thread. Then goes the render operation, which corresponds to the do render function performed on the GPU. The size of each region corresponds to its execution time. You can see that the GPU thread takes much more time than the CPU one. This means that there is a bottleneck on the GPU side due to very heavy rendering settings of our world. Rendering took 52 milliseconds, which is too much for a single frame. It comes from a simple calculation. If we need 60 frames per second, each frame must take no more than 16 milliseconds. Click on the Do Render region to focus on it. Regions are displayed hierarchically, so a function called by the other function is shown just under the calling one. Each frame is rendered in accordance with the fixed rendering sequence. Every stage is shown in the micro profile dump within the Do Render region. Render Scene is the main rendering function. It includes two basic procedures, Render Shadows and Render Screen. Both of them require some optimization. By placing the cursor over the first one, we can get some general information on it in the pop-up window. Here, we can see the time taken, the number of draw calls, shaders, polygons, and so on. Let's inspect shadows first. The whole shadows rendering procedure includes only of world light shadows now. It is so heavy that its rendering time exceeds the time budget of the whole frame. The four render shadow procedures below correspond to shadow clusters of the world light settings. We'll have to optimize shadow settings of the sunlight. Another main procedure is the render screen. It includes procedures of deferred and forward rendering. There are rendering of opaque geometry buffer, transparent rendering, post-processing, and some other minor but important stages. The most time-consuming procedures are render opacity G buffer and render SSRTGI. 
The first one can be optimized by using methods from the content optimization video tutorial, but now we're going to optimize the post-processing stage. Global Illumination. Let's return to the editor. You can save a dump to the CSV or an HTML file via the corresponding commands and send it to an expert when assistance is required. The number of frames in such a dump is defined by the micro profile dump frames command. The saved dump file can be found in the data folder of your project. Now we are going to optimize rendering settings using the data obtained. First, the number of shadow cascades of the world light source should be decreased. Then, we have to open the Rendering Settings window. In the Visibility Distances section, there is the Distance Scale Multiplier. Would be great to keep it lower. The shadow's visibility parameter is also too high. 500 meters will be enough for observing shadows. In the Shadows section, we can reduce quality settings to medium. You can also consider disabling some shadow features as well as disabling shadows at all and substituting them with Voxel Global Illumination, described in the Global Illumination video tutorial. The last thing is the quality of screen space effects, such as SSRTGI. Set the resolution parameter to quarter and the number of steps and rays to four. Just doing this has improved performance a lot and we can check it again in the micro profile. There are much less spikes now and each frame is rendered for about 18 milliseconds. Not a perfect result, but surely much better than it was before. You can control the number of frames in the web dump via the micro profile web server frames command. It can be used to speed up dump generation since it will contain less frames. You can also choose how many frames to display by simply adding a slash and desired number to the URL. There will be only 50 dump frames. You can also use micro profile for your application's logic. Let's demonstrate it on a volumetric object using the images sample from the default API samples included in the SDK. Open the application logic of the world and enable profiling by including the Unigen profiler header. Then find a function or scope you want to inspect. Let's take this image update function as an example. It updates a 3D image every frame, so it might be a very consuming operation. In the very beginning of the function, we add a line and call the begin function of the profiler class and also specify a name for this capture to be displayed. The profiling capture must be closed, so we have to put the end function in the end. Now it's time to run the project and check the result. The begin and end functions make the profiling scope available for both profiler and micro profiler features. So now you can preview how much time the function consumes by opening the engine console and typing show profiler one. Now the function appears in the profiler report. We can also inspect our function in the micro profile dump. Let's go back to the browser and update the current page to see the last dump. Somewhere in the beginning of the frame within the update and engine world update functions, there is a region with the given name that corresponds to our function. As we can see, the image update function is not so time consuming. It means the rendering might be the heaviest part. You don't have to specify a name when adding a function to the micro profile. You can simply use the function macro that will automatically use class and function name. You can also use a pair of more advanced profiler functions, begin micro and end micro. The beginning function returns an ID value which is to be used in the ending one. This enables us to create nested and intersecting profiler captures which is not possible with the previous set of functions. The functions are not available for the profiler now, but they are in the micro profile. The nested update function appears to be within the image update one, and we can see the time each one of them takes. Now you know the basics of using the micro profile tool. More detailed information on using Micro Profile for content optimization is the subject of other dedicated tutorials.